Hello guys, recently a well-known company called Spati have released an open source project and a website called PHP Operators, where you can see the list by category of popular PHP operators, look at the definition of each of them, or perform search. But in this video, we're not talking about PHP Operators, we will be talking about the source of that project, which is open sourced on GitHub. And what if I told you that this project is all front-end with Alpine.js without any server requests for dynamic elements like this? And not only that, it doesn't use the database. The data comes from markdown files. So I decided to dedicate two videos on that project. Today we'll be talking about Alpine.js and tomorrow in the next video we'll be talking about markdown and DTO and SPATI data for those operators. Now Alpine.js is kind of the least talked about letter of the tall stack. So we talk a lot about T for Tailwind, L for Livewire and L for Laravel, but Alpine is rarely used, usually used for some small dynamic behaviors like this one. This is an example of Alpine. But in this case, Spidey team have decided to put Alpine into more advanced role for the full architecture of the project. So in the resources JS app.js, you will see Alpine data with a lot of functionality inside. So this video will be kind of advanced demonstration of Alpine capabilities with example. If you haven't started or haven't touched Alpine at all, I have a separate pretty quick course Alpine.js for beginners shot in 2022, but still relevant because Alpine hasn't changed since then. And generally Alpine is used to minimize the server operations, usually with Livewire, but not necessarily. This project does not use Livewire, only Alpine.js. Let's take a look. So first a quick demo of the project. So there is a list of operators, PHP operators by category, which are preloaded from Laravel controller to Laravel blade and then to Alpine. Then there's search, for example, you can search for multiply and then clear the search, for example, or choose a random operator or choose a specific operator to read the information about. So all that is done on the client side without refreshing the page and without any server calls. All within Alpine.js. Let's take a look at the code. So we start with Laravel controller, which returns blade view operators with the data coming from Markdown. In this case, it may be from the database. And this will be the topic of the next separate video on this channel, probably tomorrow. But for now, let's go to blade. And then here we have X data, Alpine syntax. And the general simple example of Alpine.js would be this. You define X data for this specific div and then inside you have this as a variable. And then you can show variable values like this with X text. But in this case, the data for operators is much more complex. It's an object. For that, it's not defined here in the blade. Instead, we have app.js, resources.js, app.js, defining the full component of Alpine called operators with a lot of data inside. So these will be the variables of that component, which we will use inside of that X data div, and I will get to that in a minute. But what you need to understand is that this object contains properties and also methods. So init is kind of like constructor, which is calling more methods, which are defined inside of the same component. The example of that in the documentation, more simplified one is Alpine data. And if we scroll a bit down, this would be the example. Alpine data, you define the name and then callback function inside and then you may have in it like a constructor. And this would be kind of more realistic example for the timer with properties and in it and other functions. So that is loaded globally in the resources JS app JS. And then we can use these variables inside, which is exactly what is happening here in the blade. Inside of X data, if we scroll a bit down, we have template. X4 is a for each or for loop in Alpine. And we're going through visible operators by category, which is a variable here by default empty. But inside of init, inside of constructor, we have set visible operators, which is actually setting those operators in this line, visible operators by category. And then if we go back to the blade, there's for loop for categories and each category name is shown in X text. And then inside there's another for loop template X for operators of that specific category. And each operator has blade directive of X operator. And inside in that X operator we have a link with text of that link operator title, also binding the URL if you click any operator and also merging Tailwind classes. And then also for each of those operators for template, 
down below we have all the operators in another for loop and here we see if current operator slug is active which means some operator is chosen then we show the text with again x text and also there's another third layer of tags in operator tags so there's also search by tag but this is what you need to understand in terms of data what is passed from controller to blade operators then it is inside of x data with add js by the way i didn't mention that blade directive which transforms the variable into json structure and for example if we click any of the operators here we have at click prevent select operator and that select operator method is defined again in the global operators here select operator we set current operator slug and this slug is watched here in this watch to also replace window history with path to that operator then also you can see this watch search search works like this on top we have this input of x model search so whenever you start typing the search then this is activated and then set visible operators again reloads the operators with search in mind but also there are two buttons which i've shown in the very beginning search empty so for example whenever you search for something you can clean the search which looks like this and then random is another method in the same alpine components so add click random which is again in app.js which shows random operator a few more things that i haven't mentioned here there are also variables like empty for example and then in the blade there's a specific section template x if empty which would be shown if nothing is found by search so if we look for empty inside of that app.js we have this if operator's length is zero then this empty becomes true but then it shows a joke bad jokes is a separate array that says cool kind of easter egg inside of that project also one more thing that i haven't shown in the operator in the blade component there's x bind class which means that the class css classes of that blade component are dynamic depending on the slug this is how that color is changing the background color for the button so yeah this is kind of the overview of this alpine js powered project and this is a perfect example of some kind of set of data pretty limited and pretty small that you just load inside of alpine js and then navigate around with search with filters with tags showing and hiding some blocks on the page what do you think would you have done it in alpine js as well or would you have chosen Vue or React or Livewire? And what do you generally think about Alpine JS? We can discuss in the comments below. And in tomorrow's video, this will be a part two, where I will talk about the data, the backend part, where do those operators come from? And this is a combination of markdown files. So the text is actually not in the database, resources, content, MD file, but also it is powered by Spotty Sheets package with DTOs on top. So we will look at the folder called app data, what's inside. So subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that follow-up video. But for now, that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.